I did hate myself a lot <laughs> last year. Does internalized homophobia count as homophobia? No racists. Can I claim I will be 100% not a racist all the time? I do have my own struggles with white people sometimes. Does reverse racism count as racism? when applying to a room. Never homophobia, never racism, but these things have been hammered into my heart. <laughs> Very interesting. Who will sleep with me here? Do I get to choose the bed? If I was to choose the bed, I think I'll choose this one. But maybe that's just the angle of the photo makes, makes it look a bit bigger. It's probably really cheap. Hi queers! Great opportunity here. I'm looking for someone who could clean my house for two hours per day. You would get one of the beds in this room for only $300 a month. So, isn't that like two hours per day at, let's say, $10 an hour? That's $600 I should be earning, that no one's paying, plus $300 to sleep in a bunk bed, in a shared room, with temporary travelers. I don't think so. So, I'm not even making up these ones. Uh, these are all real community ads, um, real, Real online rip of friends, a masquerade. Because the thing is, I want to belong and I need a place to live. But the structure, I don't know if I can be all these things. I don't know that I can earn money and be cool and 420 friendly and of color and a grown up and volunteer and make art and bring positive energy and be laid back and do the dishes and get to know you and afford healthy food. So, if we share a space, I could sleep here in this corner. I like my solitude and I keep weird hours. But I also like the love bed, or would that mean I'm on somebody else's business, looking too much like a hierarchy's pyramid inside our own house? What about if I'm the lease owner for years now, and because the market has gone up, I can rent the extra room in my apartment for double the price, and I get to save while my roommate is having to work three jobs? talk about gentrification is ongoing in cafes around the country. But my guilt trip won't solve the problem. So, who's at the bottom? Who's on top? Who goes out and parties? Who brings the party home? Who's not able to afford to live in this house anymore? Who's in love with the roommate but won't say? Who will help? Who will change? Are we friends or not? Maybe the one in the back would like the room in the front. Maybe the one in front is shy and wants to hide. I want to find space, I want to. Here there's space. I can walk around. I can leave you alone. Everybody busy with their own thing. Each life a separate block. Hey, but can I meet you in the corner? I want to tell you a secret. Communication skills required. No texting or leaving notes about house issues. Please make at least 2.5 times the rent of the room. You will be required to verify this. Sometimes it is hard to know if what I hear coming from my roommate's room is someone laughing, or someone crying, or someone having sex. Should I knock on the door and ask if they're okay? Nah, that would be too much. <laughs> so, 
One of the best times in my life I spent living with a straight man. There weren't many conversations intended to clarify either mine or his identity, but there was respect in that house, and we had fun, and we had two cats. Broken people find each other regardless. It's kind of baffling because, remember when living together was a way to be happy after we left our original homes, the homes where we grew up? Remember when we were punks, squatting an abandoned building, and that's why we all lived together, because it was free? Remember when we were lesbians, running away from straight marriages, arriving at the women-only house to cry the tears of our children, stolen by an angry husband? Remember when our friends were dying of AIDS, and we moved in with them to help them, to feed them, to take them to the doctor, to keep the house clean? Nobody asked for a stable income then. But I'm not talking about the present versus the past. This is not a nostalgic reading. All events happen simultaneously. It's not true that the past was better. But when I see your application and you're like, be this, be that, have this much, be able to show it, to prove it, it's easy to demand certain things when it's the landlord, not you. But why do you need to know what my future plans are? <laughs> I need a room, but I do nothing. I've served nobody. I get moody, tired. My body hurts. I'm self-involved. I eat greasy food. I get wasted. And I've had more jobs than years in this world. So a lot of this is fiction, except the ads for rooms. Uh, those are real. But otherwise, I'm not accountable for any of this because am I the person who wrote the ad? Or am I the person who responded to the ad? There's no way of knowing. I don't want to become naive about the hostage situation in which we are. As a vulnerable person, I want to find alliance with other vulnerable beings as I join, who is left behind, as I embody a certain identity, who is denied a meal, a roof. As I apply to a room, I might describe myself to you. And I might seem similar to you. And you might want to be more like me, or I might want to become more like you, but we are not the same. Sometimes we exist in others, but we are all unique. That difference is not a lack of common ground, but a recognition. I will not deny where I come from, bury it under theories and words I learned. I liked you, how you were, when we first met. That lack of identity of yours that left you unprotected. That was very beautiful. Thank you.